I get a call at order, Town of Florence Planning and Zoning Regular Meeting. Today is uh, October 20th and it's 6 p.m. Uh, Mr. Ojin, will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Chairman Pranzo. Present. Vice Chair Puttrick. Present. Commissioner Bell. Present. We have a quorum. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody stood, nobody kneeled. Yeah. <laughs> you know this is a football game. Okay, new business. Circle K Convenience Store Infill Incentive Plan Application. Uh, this is a presentation on a request by the Town of Florence on behalf of Land Development Consultants to utilize the Town Court Infill Incentive Plan. Mr. Oldine, do we have a presentation? I do. Thank you. Good evening, Chair, Vice Chair, Commission. I will be giving you the presentation for the Infill Incentive District uh, application and also for the Design Review application tonight for Circle K. Um, our town planner, Will, will be giving the presentation for the, uh, the following um, Design Review application for uh, the medical office. And thank you for that uh, nice introduction. Um, it is a long one, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So tonight we are here. Um, for a, a convenience store. Now, staff was approached by the applicant with um, the proposed Circle K. So yes, I said that out loud. There's, there would be, um, that would make it the third Circle K here in town. The, the part that uh, it's funny to me is that they're all gonna be within a block of each other. Um, now, I'll get into details as to what would happen to the, the two uh, older existing stores later in the uh, presentation, but in front of you is, uh, is an image of um, the first store that you come into. Uh, it's on 20th South Main Street. Um, this, this one is located on, uh, I believe it's uh, Main Street and uh, Butte. Butte. The next one is right down the street, literally a block away, right across the, on the east side. It's uh, 135 South Main Street. Um, and the funny part to the staff is there is actually favorite stores by people that work and live here. Um, This image here will give you perspective on the actual location of the proposed uh, Circle K convenience store. It's, it's right there in the red box. The two circles to the north of that are the existing stores you just got a chance to see. Now, this is gonna be a, the proposed store is gonna be a modern, um, a gasoline uh, dispensing, gas pump dispensing, um, canopy with uh, 5,881 square feet um, of public space inside. Um, it's proposed on the corner of Main Street um, and Brady. As we talked about earlier, there's a possibility that the two stores that uh, you saw in the images um, before us would uh, possibly close once this one is opened up. Now, for those of you who don't know, this property um, where the square's at, it used to be, um, during the housing boom, it used to be a trust company here in town. Um, Foxworth, I believe, was the name of it. Um, after the housing boom went away, uh, it went vacant for a little bit, and then it became a, um, a feed store and some other um, type of uses um, during that time. And currently, it's, it's vacant. I show you this image to show you the location or the map that shows you our infill incentive plan. This will come into play here in a little bit. Um, everything within that purplish blue border um, is in the infill incentive. So that means that they would be, you, you possibly could go to council for um, application of this, uh, this plan. Um, tonight, the property we're looking at is roughly right around here. Mm -hmm. In front of you now is, um, a site plan that shows you the uh, orientation of the building. Um, the C store, obviously a convenience store, is uh, to the north of the, of the site. 
Um, you got the canopy kind of in the middle, and you got two uh, additional properties that do not belong to Circle K um, as of yet, but those are to the south. So the whole block, the majority, 80%, I would say, is going to be uh, um, used by the Circle K store. Um, the gross acreage on this property is 1.2 acres. Uh, it's vacant as of now. The, uh, the zoning for this property is Highway Business B2 Zoning District. Uh, proposed use is going to be um, general retail. Building area, as I said before, is 5,881 square feet. Proposed building height is going to be 23 feet, 8 inches. Um, and they're looking at bringing us um, 24 parking stalls for this site and one uh, 88 and accessible parking stall as well. Building setbacks. So the Info Incentive Plan, it was designed back in 2011 to, uh, to be an incentive that could be um, used to help spark some interest in our, in our downtown um, infill area. Um, staff reviewed uh, this case. Before we get into the incentive plan, this, this, this site had a couple of um, issues that, that uh, staff and the applicant have been working on, one of them being uh, proper fire flows, another uh, access to the site. Um, and also um, another issue that, that came up um, was the property is located the way you see it because when the um, Circle K store applied for its liquor license, they're required to be 300 feet away from any churches. There's a church just down the street from this, and this by locating the property in this manner, it does put them right outside of the 300 foot um, required uh, separation. So that's why it's laid out the way it is. Um, so the, the three items in the infill incentive um, that we're looking at tonight for reductions, if you will, are the building setbacks, the landscaping, the screen walls, and signage. Um, the first I'll go over is building setbacks. The property does meet setbacks except for the rear. So front is required 25 foot setback. Sides on both sides is 20. Um, and that would be off of um, the two uh, minor, uh, minor collectors. And the rear, um, which is Brady Street, is where the reduction would be needed from uh, the 10 foot required to the five feet. Um, and I mentioned already as to why that worked out that way due to the uh, requirement for the liquor license. Um, the, another item that's being addressed tonight for the infill would be screen walls. On this site, and I'll get into more details in the design review as far as what items are gonna look like, but on this site you can see um, code requires that uh, six foot walls are replaced between a business and residential. So we have residential on this area, but we have zoned commercial property on this area. One could argue that there are homes here, but they're zoned commercial. There's also um, no residential on this side. So the requirement's gonna be on off of Elizabeth for the six foot. So the applicant is asking for a reduction from six foot to three foot, but they're gonna put three foot screen walls. They're gonna add um, um, landscape buffering, which is um, shown to you in the uh, design review application, and staff would argue that um, it should be enough to, uh, to help mitigate some of the noises that's created by the site, um, and that the, the majority of the site's going to have landscaping in front of it as well, so um, that's another item that's being addressed for the infill. Um, landscaping, the property has proper landscaping, just not very much landscaping, if any, to the south of the project on this side. Now, the owner, the applicant, um, is in the process, or should the corporation is in the process of trying to purchase the two properties to the south. You can get into more details on that. But once, it, once and if that does happen, um, a design review amendment will be required. Um, you'll get the chance to see that um, for a presentation, and they'll have the opportunity to address any landscape and any uh, improvements on that side. Um, but once again, tonight we're focusing not on that, but just on what you have to see in front of you. So this area here. The last item that they're asking uh, for some relief on would be the uh, signage. Currently, on these two images here, 
Both these properties here have 25 foot pole signs currently. And they resemble this. They're functional signs. They're not conforming pole signs, but they still could be used. With the uh, acquisition of the site that we're talking about tonight, that would be the third pole sign that they have. So they have three signs. So they're asking for relief from the code that, would, that requires eight foot, um, eight foot and 32 square feet of area um, to go from that to go to 15 and to exceed 40 feet of area. Um, the sign, we'll get into the actual details in a little bit, um, is a more modern sign. Um, it will complement the, the site. It's what they have at the majority of their stores. Um, so it should not impact the site, should not impact traffic in any negative way. Um, but that's what they're asking for for this incentive plan. Um, once again, the incentive plan was designed as a way to uh, help encourage um, development, whether it be residential or commercial or industrial. And uh, staff, staff contends that um, this is being used in the proper manner to um, help out the Circle K um, with these, these four um, items that are being discussed tonight. Staff would also like to make the, the comment that um, we'll get into the uh, design, but they are bringing to us a, um, a historic district uh, design that was, it should mimic um, a lot of what um, National Bank of Arizona did. It isn't historic in nature, but the outside is going to fit very well with our historic district, which is in proximity to the north. Um, that was a, uh, an increase of 10% in the budget. They're, they're also looking at um, making sure that the property has uh, sprinklers. Um, there was some, flow, um, some uh, fire flow issues up for the site, and they're addressing that. Uh, that was an additional cost as well. So they're looking at, at uh, bringing um, proper fire flow to the area, um, which would impact their site, the sprinklers, and also uh, be an improvement to existing uh, properties that are around it. Um, so before we get into the action or, um, or talking to the applicants or questions from staff, would you like me to continue with the DR since it's on the same property and it's referencing the same stuff, or would you like me to go to questions? I have some questions at this point, and it's a good good place to stop. Fair enough. And ask these questions. Okay. But um, I'll turn it over to the other commissioners first. Okay. I, I have, the first question I have is, um, <clears throat> I want to be certain if we approve this that we don't end up with the other two Circle Ks still in operation, or another one. Chair, Vice Chair Commission, if I may, tonight's is a recommendation. The approval is done by the, by the council. Um, I understand that, but do you understand what I'm saying? If, we, if, if we're gonna do this, I think it's a great opportunity to consolidate it into one facility and do away with the other two. We don't need three Circle Ks. We don't need two Circle Ks. That's my opinion. Okay. Chair, Vice Chair, Commission, if I may. Um, I, I believe the Commission is allowed to um, add additional conditions to a um, design review because there's approval, disapproval. No. You may suggest um, additional steps to Council. We'd be happy to forward them. But um, as far as adding additional steps that um, would be for an open, closed discussion, that would be at the next application. I understand. But if you're inclined to make any additional recommendations to staff, we'd be happy to share. Right. Great. Um, let's attack this thing and get it over with. Yes, sir. What we're doing is we're not approving or disapproving a Circle K or recommending or dis we're recommending against the Circle K being built. I understand the properties in escrow and by all codes and ordinances here, you're free to build. Commissioner, Pro I'm going to bring up the applicant. So I don't know if you want to answer or the applicant. So let me get the question out and you two can decide who wants to address it. What we're doing here <coughs> right now is looking at the use of the, the uh, infill incentive plan. 
Yes, sir. This is what we're applying. So to kind of set the table, we've got two existing Circle Ks right in the same place that we want to build the third one. Now, as best as I can tell, the two existing Circle Ks are, at least the buildings in the land, are independently owned, not the same owner, okay? So the first question becomes, do we end up with a three-way competition? Now, I don't see that as survivable, at least for one. So somebody's going to drop out. In most probability, two are going to drop out. Now, not to blindside you, I'm going to read you the goal of the infill incentive plan. And what that says is the goal, number one, is to increase the number of developed parcels and revitalize and redevelop existing buildings within the district. Well, the revitalizing, you got it. The problem is the potential is much greater than zero that you're going to leave two dark buildings behind. That defeats the goal. So you've got to help me here understand how we can apply using this incentive plan when we're developing one lot but potentially taking away the livelihoods on two other lots. Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, I'm Mike Scarborough with Land Development Consultants. Uh, to answer your question, the intent here is to consolidate two old properties into one. No, that, that's on, I think that's clear for everyone what the intent is. Uh, uh, Vice Chair, your, to your point on are we going to end up with three Circle Ks, the answer is no. The intent, um, both the existing Circle Ks today are separately owned parcels by two separate individuals. We are currently uh, in a leasehold interest on those parcels. Our leases still have some time remaining on them, but the intent would be to, once we open the new store, would be to shut down the other two stores, as you mentioned. Uh, we don't have any control over what the landlord would do with those properties, although uh, on the property that's on the east side of Maine, south of Butte, uh, the intent there would be to re uh, tenant the building. That's the intent from Circle K standpoint. Uh, anytime we vacate a property, we pull the tanks, we pull the uh, uh, multiple fuel pump dispensers, we pull the canopy, and we make the building ready to be reutilized from a retail standpoint, whether that be restaurant, uh, some sort of sales office, uh, uh, just general retail in, 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 in general. Um, the intent on the east side of Maine is to re-tenant that building. Uh, we still have four years, I believe, remaining on that lease, and so the intent would be to re-tenant that building. On the west side of Maine, at, at the hard corner of Maine and Butte, we're currently in discussions with the landowner, property owner there, in an effort to, one, either purchase the asset uh, through a straight purchase, or one, to um, do a substitution, and in our world, we have leases that are we have leases all over the all over the place, and so we're trying to take that landholder and say we're going to pull push you into another in, push is an awful word. We're going to give you an opportunity to relocate your leasehold interest into another parcel so we can take ownership of this parcel. And in that case, again, we're still interested in vacating the parcel. We've spoken in depth with planning on their concerns about Maine and Butte being a high traffic, high visibility intersection as you're coming into and through the town. We think it's an ideal location for future restaurant, future retail at that intersection. And so one of the commitments we made was that we would, assuming we can get control of the property, that we would uh, try to retenant it. And if we couldn't uh, retenant within a certain period of time, that we would be willing to scrape it and make it more available and ready for redevelopment. We felt like that was a better alternative than leaving a building there for unspecified amount of time for, for redevelopment. So you're telling me that corner of Butte and Maine, west side, 
you can get control of that property? We're in the process of trying to get control through two different methods, either a straight out purchase or we're trying to substitute that property for another property so that we can get control of it. Yes, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Chairman, Vice Chairman, Commissioner. My name is Susie Peel and I'm with Circle K. My address is 1130 West Warner Road, Tempe, Arizona 85284. I wanted to clarify on the property on Main and Butte, uh, it, is in a, uh, it is in a tranche. It's in a sale and lease back tranche uh, with a master landlord. And it is with a number of other properties that we're currently negotiating on the entire package to try and pull certain sites out of it so that we could just purchase them in fee or substitute them for other sites. So that is in process. We feel very strongly that we're going to be able to come to a resolution one way or the other on that package because there are several other sites that we wanted to pull out, this being mm -hmm. one of them. So that is why we're doing something different here than we are doing at on the east side. The east side, we have a landlord that does not want to deal with us. They do not want to um, take it back early. They do not want to do anything. They want to put someone else in there, and, and we want to protect the community as well as our own business, business interest from having another competitor there. So we're looking at different options to retenant and working with local brokers and national brokers to put someone qualified in both of the locations. Well, you, you see my problem is that I have to make a recommendation to council, not just me, but the whole council. And so I got a lot of tentatives hanging out here. And if those tentatives never come to pass, then what I've done is I've violated the, the infill. So. Well, that is why we made the commitment, at least on the one, if we can get control of the one on Main and Butte, if we can't tenant it or put someone in that within a reasonable amount of time. Then I'll end up with an infill lot. Sorry? I'll end up with an infill lot. You're going to take it down. Well, that's what the staff asked us to do. Well, our, the staff our, asked our, you to do it. Our concern, our concern is um, ending up with three gas stations. We're, nothing against Circle K. No, it's not three gas stations. It's one infill creating two infills. That's the concern. Because then this document really should not apply. I want it to apply. I like what you're doing. Don't get me wrong. It's just that to send a favorable recommendation to council on an empty basis. So you have to help me here. And I think the best way to do it is and I'm going to have to noodle while the re we're doing it, right. but we'll we'll pencil in some contingencies that uh, the no, I don't got to find a way to to write this so that it, it's a part of the package when it moves forward that it's contingent upon the west side either being uh, repopulated or leveled and the east side with a new tenant, which you have no control over. Right. Well, and that, and that is the issue and that is the concern. I mean, I think if you look at what's taken place down Main Street, the number of, I'm not sure if it's me or why this thing seems to be going in and out, but um, when you look at what's happening up and down Main Street, at least from a preliminary outsider's point of view, you have, you have a lot of existing structures, but not necessarily a lot of existing viable businesses inside those structures. Exactly, we have Understood. a lot of dark buildings, and this. But what we're redeveloping, what we're redeveloping, is that exact same thing. You've got an existing structure that isn't necessarily viable for the business that wants to be located on Main Street now. That we're looking to redevelop. All right. So when your math, when you're saying you're taking two. And you're taking three and then leaving two. I don't know that that necessarily is the case because we're fixing a situation now at Maine and Brady with a business that isn't open and viable and we're redeveloping that. Yeah. In addition, what we're doing is we are in escrow currently today to purchase the car wash uh, piece that's to the south no east kidding. of our site. Yes, sir. And we're in escrow also to purchase the water tower. And the intent is to combine all of those and combine them into one project to where we have a little bit better landscape offer on the south side of our property and we've also got a little bit more parking because we truly believe this is going to be a busy project a busy property 
So while I understand your concern over how are we how are we leaving these other two sites, unfortunately for us, it's it's largely out of our control. If we own the property, we could commit to a lot of things. Right. But we only have a leasehold interest in them. But for what we're doing on the full block area that we're in escrow to purchase today, I, I think that we absolutely meet the intent as far as trying to bring back life and revitalize the downtown area. In addition, we've had great success in, in other markets in retenanting those buildings. A 2,500, 3,000 square foot building isn't that difficult to retenant for us and other markets. I'm not familiar with your market, but we, yeah, have, Michael, say, but we have had success in doing that in other markets. And Circle K, in, in some cases, at 7th Street and UC, uh, 7th Street and Roosevelt, we found even a, a wildly creative idea there where we were able to bring in UCP as a partner and, and park them in there as a, a small community facility. So we, we've been successful in being kind of out of the box thinkers and trying to find a ways to retenant that. We have four years remaining on both those leases. We don't, we don't want as a, as a corporation to continue to pay lease payments on a property that we're not occupying either. We would rather have it retenanted. So we have Michael, investment in doing that as well. If I may, um, <clears throat> Chairman, um, Council Liaison would like to speak, if that's okay with you. Sure. Yeah. yeah uh, as far as, you know, you, you say that you think they're violating the incentive, uh, infill incentive, no, they're, they're actually, we're utilizing it. Uh, and li like the gentleman just said, you know, it's that those aren't Circle K properties, the old properties. So it's not up to them to worry about properties that they don't own. And, and that really has nothing to do with this project. It don't? No, it does not. No, no, this, this, this is a, this is a, a project that stands on its own because they are leaving those other uh, locations shouldn't have any bearing on them moving forward and improving uh, an abandoned lot and, and putting in a very nice project. Yep. And those other properties have plenty of potential to be reused. Sir. And as the, la uh, the lady said, that uh, the one owner doesn't want to deal with them so they, uh, so you know, that's not their fault. That's not Circle K's fault. Sir, I don't think. I don't know what stipulation you you, you say you want to put on there, but uh, if if you're saying that you're recommending against this because of those other two properties uh, being vacated by them, that isn't going to make any difference. Chair, Vice Chair, Commission. Um, Council Member Hawkins, if I may, as I mentioned earlier, um, you have the ability and the right to make recommendations, additional steps, if you will. Um, this will be forwarded to uh, Council. Um, the favorable or not is up to you, but um, the Council Member has a point. I won't, get, I won't even go into that, but uh, do you have any more additional questions for staff or the applicant? No, they've explained it out. I just don't take a narrow view. I look at our community as a whole. So we'll see where that goes. Um, With that said, would you like to take a recommendation since we've already kind of hammered out all the details? I'll, I'll ask for... <clears throat> well, this is a standalone project. Yes. This is, it, it, it's not connected to anything. It's, it's, a, it's a standalone project. Member. How many dark stores we got on Main Street? Can you tell me? That has nothing to do with this project. If you can... We are... Well, they are trying to fill a vacant one right now. That's the whole thing. I understand that. I look at it differently than you do. Sure, You'll get your but I'm just, I'm just stating what the facts are goes here. in front of the council. Pardon me? You'll get your chance to vote on it when it goes in front of the council. Right, but I'm just saying I don't understand why, uh, where you're, you're, you're You think I a, should not probe this? You're, you're putting a stipulation in there. Put any stipulation yet. You're, you're okay. Let, let's see what, okay. Add one, let me just add one more thing. The, what, what the concern is, 
it, and I don't care who owns them, we end up with a brand new Circle K, and the other two end up still being gas stations and convenience stores. We don't need three of them downtown. So how do we protect the town when we're doing this? We don't want to stop their project. We agree with the project, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to stop their project. But how do we, how do we in this exercise, protect the town from those two stores continuing to operate as Chair, gas stations? Chair, Vice Chair, Commission, great point. Um, I see your concern, but I have to once again agree with the uh, council member that tonight's case is the focus is on this site. Um, it isn't to focus no, on this site. No, the focus is on this infill document. You're right. asking us to approve right. the use of infill. And it's, yes, sir, and it's absolutely, and it's for this site. So staff is, you know, has, has uh, given you a list of, of benefits for, uh, for the project if the infill was to be approved, and tonight it's a recommendation, but um, your, your concern has been noted, sir. <clears throat> All right. Okay. I think well, we beat this horse to death. Let me, let me ask one more question. Yes, so, sir. So we do the infill and we approve the new Circle K. The other two properties that are there. If somebody wants to come in and operate another gas station, take, take over one of those or both of them, and operate as a gas station at a convenience store, what can we do to prevent that? No, oh, there's no prevention needed. Not needed. The, the zoning that, that is in place for those two sites is commercial, so as long as the use is under the commercial use, it'd be allowed as long as it doesn't um, <clears throat> violate any contracts that they have in place with Circle K, who's, who had the lease on both those properties. So this is a, if, if the question was about use, then it's commercial, so whatever use. But once again, as mentioned before, there are some uh, conditions that are going to be set by the uh, applicant slash Circle K um, as far as what can go in there per what the lease says. So um, once again, staff understands the concern. Um, do, we, do we have a recommendation? Or if you feel so inclined to? I'll let you guys make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the applicant. Uh, Vice Chair, to, to elaborate on that. We are removing the, the underground storage fuel tanks upon vacating. We're removing all the pumps. We're removing the canopy. And what they're going to be left with is a 2,500, 3,000 square foot store. The like, and we also control those properties for four more years. The likelihood of someone other than a national operator to come in there and, and compete against us is very low. And two, if those properties were large enough and viable enough for us to have redeveloped on either, either with the uh, landlord's uh, consent and working with us on the one on the east or the one on the uh, west, they're not large enough to redevelop in the manner that they need to be re redeveloped in. We don't see a national operator coming in here and becoming a competitor, and we certainly don't see a small mom and pop, uh, what we call jobbers, uh, coming in here and being a competitor because of the pure capital expense that it would take to reinvent those sites again as gas stations. Um, we don't see it as a viable option that for them to remain gas stations. We're certainly going to bring them down to where they're not gas stations when we vacate them. And I, I truly believe the expense involved in doing it for anyone outside of a national operator just isn't, isn't there, and the land size isn't there for it to be a viable operation as, a, as what we're doing today from a convenience retailing standpoint. It's just not large enough. I don't okay. want you to misconstrue. I personally do like the project. And I think it does add. It's just I have to test this to make sure that we're staying within the guidelines of our infill. Because you're I, getting breaks, and the town's getting breaks, from what I understand as well. Yes, sir. There's been a very much a collaborative effort to get it to this point to be in front of you guys tonight. And I would also, again, point back to the fact that we're in escrow to purchase two more properties, that while the water kiosk is in a manned business, I think everyone would like to potentially see that get relocated or, or moved out of the out of the Main Street district, and the car wash and the associated building to the east of that. I think everyone would be happy to see that be uh, removed and, and demoed. So we're we're picking we're picking off. If we looked at properties, we're picking up multiple properties in this downtown core that we're redeveloping. And so if we started looking at it even from a very technical standpoint, how many properties are you vacating versus how many properties are you redeveloping? I would say that we're exceeding the number that we're vacating and we would meet the intent, even if you looked at it from a 
point by point black and white standpoint. All right. Yes, sir. No, I thought you were going to say something. No. Good. Can I have a motion, no. please? If I can find it. Okay. Yeah, I know. We're okay. Um, Here. I move that we. I move that we um, forward a favorable recommendation to the town council on. Case number PZ16-56-INN 16 dash 56 dash INF. Paper back. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion by Commissioner Patrick, second by Commissioner Bell. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Chair, Vice Chair, Commission, I'll continue the uh, the presentation with the design review. This application, case number is PZ 1655 DR. Location is the same as, as we all already discussed. Here's an image of uh, what is currently there now. So in this application, in this presentation, we're going to cover five main points, the building elevations, the access and parking, landscaping, <clears throat> drain and drainage for the site, and signage. So proposed for this site, we're going to have two points of entry off of Main Street and one off of Elizabeth. Uh, both are going to be 40 feet. Um, I believe the one on the, uh, the east side and the ones that are going to be on the west over here. Um, there's going to be a circle loop here that exists on the site, and that's going to be to accommodate the signage that was proposed earlier. Um, as we mentioned already, the, there is a, a possibility that the um, Circle K will acquire the properties to the south, and when they do, we'll come back to see you to... Uh, look at the rest of the site with the, uh, the additional properties. They'll also have to do a lot combination to add it as part of the, um, the site. Um, a traffic impact analysis um, was submitted by the applicant, uh, was reviewed by ADOT and our town engineer. Um, current code requires uh, parking for every 300 square feet of, of, of a public space. They're required to have one parking stall. Um, they're providing 25 parking stalls, one of them being uh, ADA compliant, or which is a van, um, an ADA van accessible parking spot. The site, as you see it, um, the majority of the parking is going to be in the front, um, in front of the fuel stations. There is, there is some uh, extra parking that exists over here on the west side of the project. Sorry. Thank you, sir. East side um, of the site. And obviously there'll be parking that's going to um, be with the parking for the uh, fuel stations that exist here. Now here's, here's the good stuff. Building elevations. Currently, if you look at a, a Circle K um, in any of the neighbor, um, neighboring um, areas, Gilbert, for example, or the one they're building in Coolidge, they've got a pretty standard look to them. This one, however, um, is a more historic looking um, design. It's, it's already currently being used uh, in Phoenix um, off of Roosevelt. And the brick veneer, as you see on there, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna encompass all four sides. Um, they even are gonna add it to the, um, the canopy where the fuel stations are gonna be at. Um, this look, we actually went to a site, we got the chance to see it, what it looks like, how it works. It's very impressive. Um, it's, uh, it doesn't stick out, it blends, and this being different than what they usually have, as I mentioned earlier, it's a, it's a cost in increase, but it will blend much nicer than, uh, than their current look. Um, there's other elements um, on this uh, project that they brought. So they looked at different uh, styles of um, architecture um, that exist here in Florence, from traditional to Sonoran, um, and also a, um, 
traditional uh, transformed. And they looked at bringing portions of smooth walls. So they have some parts of the building, on, the, on the, especially on the back side and on the sides that have the smooth stucco. Um, for the massing, they, they went with two different colors. They have metal awnings on the side that are, have a, almost a patina green to them, um, which should complement the building as well. Um, what's funny to me, the only thing that really sticks out um, is the Circle K signage that's in the front, but that's what they want. Um, so that, and that sign is, is, is standard throughout um, the, uh, the company and the existing signs that, are, that, that they use nowadays. They also went with some dark windows on the back. It'll be um, tinted to help um, kind of blend into the area. So this, the side that you see here, this is the side that's going to face, um, I believe it was Brady Street. And so there, there is some plants that they're going to place here right along the back. Um, they also added some gooseneck uh, lighting to the site that's going to point down. It's not going to spray upward or do any, uh, any light pollution, as they call it. Um, but those are gooseneck lights that are going to exist on the project, kind of to complement the historic look that they're going for. Um, another item that's kind of interesting is they're going with a, a no curb on the front. Um, if Next time you go to a Circle K, you'll see they've got a parking area, they've got a curb, and then you step on it, you go in. This is a no curb, it's slanted downward, so um, there's less chance of people tripping and falling. I thought it was a really neat feature. Some of the other items that we talked about was doing some hardscaping um, on this project, um, on this side. These are, I believe, little uh, tables with chairs for people to sit down. Um, on the opposite side is where you're going to have your, uh, your trash location. Um, and also, uh, I believe it's a loading, an unloading area, which isn't required. Um, it's required for certain sizes, but this one wouldn't trigger it. But they, it's pretty standard for most Circle Ks. Um, the lighting plan that they're going to use is a pretty standard lighting plan. Um, no overbearing lights um, shouldn't be a problem. Once again, um, on this side here is for the trash um, and also for, I believe, the area where the, where the fuel trucks dump their fuel. Um, on the grain and drainage, um, the, the site is going to have a 100-year, uh, one-hour event. It's mostly underground retention, um, which, uh, which should fit the site quite well. There's not a lot of room on top to do any on-site retention, so it's underneath. Um, for landscaping and screening, um, they're going to uh, add um, a lot of desert trees to, uh, to the site. You know, uh, we're talking about uh, desert museums. It's a hybrid of a Palo Verde. Um, acacias, um, just trees that, that are adapt to this environment, they do well in the heat. Same with the plants. They're doing some of the obvious plants that you see around town that uh, do well in the heat. They should thrive, they should do well. They're going to add um, uh, a certain layer of um, decomposed granite uh, to, to help um, blend into the area. Pretty common for um, new, uh, new businesses here in town. A three-foot screen wall will be on the north um, north and east side of, um, of this project. And as mentioned, um, all plants are going to be low water usage plants that we're um, asking, asking for on this project. Um, but we'll be using some LED lighting. Um, well, the, the majority of the lighting on this site is going to be LED lighting, which um, is very bright with a, uh, not expensive to run and easy to maintain. Signage, they've got three different components of signage. The first one that I'll cover is the, the main building wall sign, as you saw an image of it earlier. Pretty standard. Um, what they're proposing is per code, um, no, obvi no, no issues. Um, it's a cabinet sign that's going to exist on the top that, that is allowed per code. Doesn't exceed the, uh, the 200 square feet total um, per the town code. They're also looking at canopy signage. This also is um, pretty standard and is per the code. Um, nothing out of the usual here. Uh, typical logo that you see on most Circle Ks. And the final one is going to be the 15-foot 
um, monument sign located at the front of the two entry points, as mentioned before, off of um, Highway 79. It's a double-sided sign. Um, it's kind of interesting, but the very top of the sign is what they consider like a cabinet, but with the lighting inside, um, and it'll glow at night uh, to uh, show the uh, the logo of the of the business. But these two here are the fuel. Um, they're digital signs that would show the prices of the fuel. Um, pretty common diesel and just regular fuel on top. Um, once again, these. Aside from the, the issue of the total amount of uh, area and the, the item with the size as far as how tall it is, um, everything else is, is uh, per the town code. Um, this is also going to have some stone veneer on it to kind of mimic what's already on the fuel canopy and also on the building itself. Um, so, and looking at this, um, it should bring a positive impact to, to the area. Um, as we already mentioned, the issue with the two existing stores, um, it's a pretty common um, style of gas station that we see nowadays. The only difference on this one is um, it's gonna have a different design, more of a one that fits the town of Florence. Um, the applicant is here, so I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Staff has recommended approval for this um, this case. Any questions for staff or the applicant? Well, you mentioned on the, uh, what was it, south side or whatever, they're going to put in a three-foot fence instead of a six? Yes. What, what's the reason they couldn't put in a six as a, as a binder? What, why just a three-foot? Um, when we spoke with them, the six-foot wall can sometimes be uh, overwhelming. So the intent was to help, to the, the idea behind a six-foot wall is to help calm down the noises that are created. Staff would argue that um, we had um, this type of situation come up at the Anthem over by a bank that had the same situation. They didn't want a gigantic wall, so they, they went with screening, landscaping, and a three-foot wall. Uh, and it was, we were able to mitigate the noise, especially off of Hunt Highway. So that's why, is, is to um, have a more, um, uh, a better look for the site um, because you're going to have neighbors that are, live across the street that will be staring at a wall all day long um, with a few trees in between. Having a smaller wall that doesn't um, impact the area and that's not what they're staring at every day. I know I, know I wouldn't want to see a wall personally, but that, that was the intent. That's why they're asking for a three-foot wall is to help it blend better. Um, I did make the argument in the uh, staff report that uh, because of the existing uses that have been there, staff would contend that the impact, the noise impact that was created um, has been there before um, in several different uses. So they're bringing a use that would be as probably um, similar to the trust, maybe not as, wouldn't be as loud, I wouldn't think, but um, so the impact of the noise was there. Um, it'd be different if it was a, um, there was never a use on the site. So once again, all these factors were taken into consideration when we when they, we talked about this, but we think it's going to have a better um, look to the to the site versus the neighbors staring at a wall. Any other questions? Did you consider lighting when you talked about the wall? Did I consider lighting when you talked about the wall? I'll give you for instance. There's a single street light right outside my house, and at midnight I can sit in my living room and read the newspaper by it. Yes. So, so the lighting that they're proposing sprays down, it doesn't outspray. It's um, pretty common. Um, a lot of these uh, new stores that go in, they've got to comply with, um, with the um, dark sky ordinances that exist and local ordinances. So what they're proposing is, is it kind of, I believe, the more of a vintage shape, that, not vintage, but um, cone-shaped light that sprays down versus out. So all those were taken into consideration, and they, they're not trying to, they understand that it could spray over, but that's the other reason why we were uh, encouraged the, uh, the trees and the, the landscaping on the side was to help buffer any of that. But we definitely will uh, keep our eyes on that to make sure it doesn't disturb anybody. It is annoying. I, I could understand that. Okay, th sure. then I have to ask the question regarding the three-foot wall. Yeah. Um, you have to notify the neighbors across the street 
were they they were they informed that this wall is normally a, a required to have a six foot wall and they're going to be a, th a three foot wall and landscaping have they been informed of that vice chair um, Patrick there's already a six foot wall there it's a chain link wall that has um, razor wire a razor wire bob wire on it now so um, Staff, but I'm not asking what. Yeah, no, staff, staff did not did not ask the neighbors or uh, okay. ask for the input. But uh, that was the other item. That was I'm not asking what staff thinks. I'm asking what the neighbors think because they're going to have to look at it. Right. No. It's, and, it's, and I would tend to agree with you that a three foot wall with landscaping is probably a better deal than a chain link fence. So no, the answer but, is no. But you should ask them. Yes, sir. Um, understood. Any other questions? I'm good. Can I have a motion, please? Okay. Make a motion that uh, move to approve the design review application PZ 16-55 for the proposed Circle K convenience store subject to the conditions of, of staff to attend design review and all the recommendations of staff. Second. Second. So I have a motion by Commissioner Bell, second by Commissioner Petrick. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Can I, uh, I just have a quick question for the girl from Circle you can. K. You can. Have, it's I closed it. It's done. <laughs> I'm not good. Chair, Vice Chair, Commission, if you feel inclined to allow them to speak, they can speak after the meeting, but you have to recognize them if you wish you, you could ask them a question if you want them to speak question has nothing to do with the case it has to do with circle k but i can oh then yeah he's then he's right no if you if you uh, sorry oh, sir. if no, you stick no. around yeah for a few minutes that's fine would you please sorry okay, okay. moving right along item c medical office and pharmacy design review application a presentation for approval or disapproval of a design review application for a proposed medical office and pharmacy located at 420, I'm sorry, 240 West Highway 287 south of the town core. Will, um, our town planner will take this presentation. I couldn't remember Will's last name, sorry. Good evening, Chairman, Vice Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Will Randolph, town planner under uh, Gilbert Ogeen here in the Community Development Department. Uh, I will present to you the item 4C regarding the uh, medical office and pharmacy, pharmacy design review application. Um, of course, this is for a proposed medical use over at um, West Highway 287. I want to note there's, there's a correction on the address. It is now 174 West Highway 287 uh, after working with our um, GIS associate over at Community Development. So I apologize for that. It is 174 West Highway 287. The uh, location is between the Family Dollar Store to the east, and then you have the Green Tree Inn Hotel to the west. And here is the uh, Kidney Dialysis Center. And then, uh, of course, to the north is the um, Florence High School. And here is Highway 287, of course. And the blue line indicates where the vacant lot is and where the design review application or the proposed development would occur. So here is the site plan. A uh, little bit of the background on this project. Um, developer's name is Simon CRE. He has been working with his architecture consultant, who is known as Archicon, the representative is here. His name is Mr. Uh, Mark Barber. Um, also, they um, believe in bringing a medical type of use facility here, but they believe there's definitely a nece necessity for it. Um, the uses are warranted here, um, and there are some dem the demands here in the Florence area. The zoning on this property, of course, is B2 Highway Commercial, which al allows for this type of medical uh, professional office use. And it also falls in line what is, with what is designated in the general plan, which is community commercial. And also, this is a pretty um, convenient spot. Well, as it, as it is now, it is vacant, but 
Developing this site will allow for complementing the uses to the east and the west in um, allowing for um, uh, more flow and access between the western and eastern sites when also having to uh, um, get access to this site. A uh, li little bit more of the details about the building itself. Uh, it's approximately 12,200 square feet. Uh, 9,680 square feet of it will be used for um, the medical office uses, which will feature up to about 12 exam rooms and other professional offices. And then the 2,500 square feet will be for a pharmacy uses, dispensary uses, which will also feature a drive-through window and a canopy on the west side of the building, which here is the west side, north side, east, and south. Access is given to this site from the 287 highway. Uh, if you're going in a westerly direction, you could have access here. And then the western access is provided here onto what's called as um, uh, Sunrise Plaza Drive. Uh, this eastern access, the applicant agreed with the town to provide uh, paving improvements on the south side family dollar parking lot. And this was also come in agreement with the uh, agreement they had with uh, family dollar, of course. Uh, the, with the western access is not required because by code they're allowed to only need any one access, but we, they worked with staff in having um, agreement of having a western access with this existing paved road that is of good quality right now and, and it, will, it is being used currently by the Green Tree Inn Hotel and the Dialysis Center. Uh, also, the applicant has worked with staff in providing circulation around the entirety of the building. Uh, we went through, through some variations of um, finalizing the site plan and they, of course, met with planning staff, fire department staff, town engineering staff, and we wanted t total circulation that would allow for fire trucks, ladder trucks, and of course, this is a, a proposed medical office building. Uh, we would want access for uh, emergency amb ambulatory transport on the rear side of the building. And then, of course, um, the applicant is aware that they had to go through a traffic impact analysis and work with the uh, Arizona Department of Transportation to get ultimate approval from the access from the Highway 287. Uh, real quickly here, here's the proposed landscaping. Uh, the applicant is definitely going to have uh, proposed landscaping in the retention basins on the south side of the uh, parking lot that is in front of the building with various uh, low water use uh, trees and shrubs, which will definitely improve the site of what now is just a vacant lot. Uh, there's definitely going to per be perimeter landscaping, the six-foot screen wall on the rear, uh, landscaping in the uh, islands, and then also, I'm sorry, I forgot to mes mention there will be pedestrian access, too, from the, from the area of the 287 right away onto the uh, south side of the site. Uh, the, the building elevations, real quick, uh, they were definitely designed to have a more uh, southwest contemporary architecture mind and to be compatible with the uh, buildings to the east and the west. Uh, they were uh, kind of kept in consideration of the dialysis center uh, also to the west and uh, would definitely have a modern feel to them. Um, they also uh, definitely have uh, windows and a vertical nature to the score lines and the levels of the facade of the building. The main entrance of the building, of course, is on the south side, and this will be the main entry point, which is shown in this picture right here. And then this is the rear side of the building, which there will be rear access given to, for obviously the workers that will work there, or um, in case of emergency medical personnel have to enter the building. Uh, colors are kind of a, definitely an earth tone, southwestern feel, but to also uh, uh, help match with the Florence area also. And here's a finalized design rendering, looking at the building from a southwest corner perspective. Um, ultimately, staff, after going through extensive reviews and working with the courteous applicant, we uh, ultimately recommend approval by a planning zoning commission with the following conditions that were supplied in your packet. And uh, hopefully you had enough time to review those. Um, some of the uh, major conditions are, of course, meeting the fire code requirements. 
having enough uh, water line flow to the building to supply the uh, sprinklers for this commercial type of building, which the applicant was very uh, gracious to work with us in coming forth with uh, develop making a development agreement that was uh, submitted to the town. And this will have to be reviewed and worked through before any uh, construction documents well, that, are submit that will be submitted after the development agreement. And then also the applicant was very, well, one of the other major conditions was uh, working with getting ADOT approval to, uh, prior to um, uh, final issuance of occupancy. So that concludes my presentation and um, staff can answer any questions and the applicant is also here. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I don't Chair Rice, Chair Commission, I wanted to just clarify one thing real quick. Great image. So, as mentioned before, there's actually two points of access on this site. The only main access and the only access for this site is going to be here. Uh, with the uh, engineer being present, the manager, everybody that was involved, there is an existing road as you can see it now. Um, so the decision, because it's not the main point of access, was to leave that open as you see on the site plan. However, with that said, um, there's no agreement in place to um, maintain it now. Fire and uh, engineering, everybody um, that was involved, the whole uh, town team and the applicant um, were in agreement that this, that's the, the area that's highlighted in the reddish purple color is going to be improved to accommodate large trucks, fire trucks, um, but this side over here is just going to be left open. Um, I wanted to make that clear, but as you saw in the image, there is an access road that's there, um, but this is uh, the main and only point right here. It was a point of contention in the beginning, but I think uh, we resolved any issues that came from that, which eventually led to the loop design you see on the site. So a vehicle can um, enter the project here, wrap around, and come out this way, or actually the other way um, because of the drive through that, that's being proposed. So I want to make that very clear because um, I know the owner was, um, it was uh, something that we, we worked on and, and came to an agreement on. So. That's why that side is highlighted and the other side is not. But it is being left open and uh, all parties are in agreement. Any questions for Will? No, just uh, one question for the owner from me. Please state your name and address for the record. Mark Barber, um, 13311 North 93rd Way, Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay, Mr. Barber, simple question. There's 10 uh, conditions that are listed here. Have you had a chance to review them and you agree with them? Yes, I have and yes, I do, Chairman. Okay. okay. Can I have a motion? Go ahead. Go ahead. I make a motion uh, to approve the design review application PZ 16-58 of the proposed medical office buildings with the conditions recommended by staff. I'll second them. So I have motion by Commissioner Bell, second by Commissioner Petrick. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Okay, call to the public. Call to the public for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Individual commission members may respond to criticisms, may ask staff to review a matter, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, comma, members of the commission shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. Do we have any public? Close the public. Call to the commission, current events only. Any comment, gentlemen? I have nothing. No. Close call to the commission. May I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Petrick, second by Com Commissioner Bell. All those in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>